this is my Tango Diary. You know that elegant effortlessness, that freedom in movement that seems to fit perfectly in, in every moment when you watch a dancer or when you're dancing with someone and it just happens. How do you create that in the tango and outside of tango in your life as well? Well, one of the keys, the way I see it, is something I call becoming instead of doing. Basically, it means that you become the dance. So the dance is not something outside of you that you're trying to do. In other words, you do not insist on a separate identity, you and the dance. And the dance is not something you do, it's not something you wear, like jewelry. It becomes you. Remember the movie Matrix? And uh, the scene with the little boy? There is no spoon? Do not try and bend the spoon. That's impossible. Instead, only try to realize the truth. What truth? There is no spoon. There is no spoon? Then you'll see that it is not the spoon that bends. It is only yourself. The Oracle will see you now. By using both yin and yang, the feminine and the masculine creative powers. So, before you can become something else, you have to let go of what you are. Um, if you want a glass of cherry juice, you first have to have a cup, but if the cup is already filled with water and you start pouring that cherry juice into it, it will start mixing, but it will be a while and it will be difficult and it will spill and it will create all sorts of problems for you before you can get a full glass of just cherry juice, right? So it's much easier if you just pour out the water or drink the water and then have your cherry juice come into a, an empty glass, right? Same goes for if you're holding on tightly to something and you're not letting it go and you're holding on to it, it's difficult for you to hold on to something else. So you first have to let go, and then you hold on to something else, right? So this brings us to the first step. The first step in becoming instead of doing is let go. Letting go of uh, the mental and physical aspects that are involved in whatever you're trying to accomplish. So, in tango, for instance, the physical aspects would be to uh, let go of tensions. So that you don't come to tango with a bunch of different ten tensions, and on top of them, you try to do tango, right? So the first step would be let go of the tensions. This can be achieved very efficiently through Alexander Technique, for instance. And uh, that takes you to the end of step number one. Now we have step number two. Step number two is where you have let go and you're ready to receive the cherry juice, the tango, whatever it is, right? So 
in tango you would get, for instance, you would fill your body with an awareness so that you become that awareness, your body becomes that awareness. It's not an awareness and your body, it's you fill your body with that awareness. It's the feminine power and it has a holistic feeling quality. Emotions and feelings have a holistic quality that logical thought does not possess to the same extent. So, this is where you receive, become aware in all of your body, and you go to step number three. So, step number three, that would be where you use the masculine power. And so you activate the masculine power, the action, the force, but you anchor it inside of the feminine. So, in this case, for instance, in tango, you would anchor it in the, the, the sensation of awareness throughout your body and the music of the tango. And that, the music would then move you creatively right? So that you're not trying to do something from the outside. It comes from the inside. It's anchored and it moves within the context that is already being set. This way you are not moving against anything. You're not fighting against anything. So there is no I can't do that step because there is no I separate from the step, right? And the idea of me trying to do something, trying to do a step, perform something, do something, is a way of looking at it through uh, the masculine power that takes away the first two steps. The one, letting go, opening, and two, receiving, and then having the three being the action from that context, right? So if instead you go with your tensions, in this case, in tango, with your tensions, and without an awareness of, uh, of what's going on in your body, you go and do the step, you're going to experience a lot of hardship and it's going to be tough and difficult. And this is what usually happens in our world. We very often act from a masculine standpoint without using the other powers that facilitate everything. So, when you instead move from an anchor that is set in the feminine, you create that flow because you move within the context so there are no obstacles for you. And you use the holistic quality where you identify with whatever it is you're doing. It becomes you. You become the channel for tango. And so you open up, you channel tango through you. You don't do it. There is no you and tango and you try to do it, right? And for the leader, this facilitates the idea of leading through intention, as opposed to leading through force. It's as if moving from the Newtonian physics of uh, pushing and pulling into a quantum setting where you are changing the context and thereby changing the movement of everything. So. In the pushing and pulling context, you have a lot of resistance that you have to fight against. And that is what is eliminated if you're able to use all three parts. The letting go, the unification, receiving and unification with whatever it is you're receiving, identification with that in a sense, and then using the force, the action, 
in that context so that there is no resistance in that sense. If you're able to do this, then you're going to have some pretty awesome experiences on the dance floor. And uh, let me know what you think.